Welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel. On this channel, I help you integrate systems into your backyard that will serve both you and your family for years to come. So let's all explore the new possibilities and not just be the next boring yard. Let's go beyond our shores and explore the possibilities that are right in front of us. So please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified as new videos come out all the time. So let's see what's going on in this episode of EB Explorer. In this episode of EB Explorer, we go and visit my friend Dave's food forest. Dave is also a palm aficionado, which I think you will enjoy. If you're new to Eat Your Backyard, please subscribe so you'll be notified as new videos come out. In this episode, we'll look at dozens of types of fruit trees and also some really interesting varieties of palms and get all of Dave's guidance on how to grow them and his experience. I hope you'll stay until the end of the video where we actually drink a coconut with lime from his trees. Okay, let's get started. I am excited going over to visit my buddy Dave. See his awesome backyard and this is springtime so it is definitely the right time to go check it out. Look at that. So beautiful. Man, a lot of nice ornamentals too. The only way to travel. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, I guess, since you've been here. I can't remember. Um... Yeah, it really has. Stella, come. <whistles> She's not a very obedient dog. Come on, Stella. Come what on, baby. Sweet puppy. Come on, let's go. Stella, come on. Let's go. <laughs> let's take the long way. Yeah, she, she's a mama's girl. The Gotta puppy. <laughs> Got to show them how you fertilize the food forest. <laughs> <laughs> That's the animal component of your food forest. Man, everything looks beautiful right now. Yeah, I guess we got, um, got quite a bit of... Everywhere you go in your yard, you have some... This is strawberry guava here, isn't it? So you recognize that? It's good. Hawaiian I mean, tea plant, but two strawberry guava. I remember from the last time, but it, last time I was here, it was like winter time. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, they haven't really supplied much guava that was edible just because yeah. uh, the fruit flies get them. But yeah, I've been adding more natives in. But yet the leaves look great. Trying to trying to get rid of some of the exotics like this. But I don't know. I oh, still, really? I still keep some exotics just because they look cool. But the, the natives are nice addition. And so I got some grasses out there and... Well, I think you had lemongrass last time I was here. Yeah. And then out front here, there's there's a couple of uh, blanket flour and some beet sunflower maybe mixed in somewhere. Oh, that's cool. blanket flour. So, yeah, I was thinking of putting some railroad vine maybe in the back. Yeah, I have some of that. It gets kind of invasive, but um, it's, yeah. it looks cool. Got to trim it a lot, I guess. Yeah, the goal is to get rid of the grass entirely. Really? Yeah. I would like to get rid of this area next and turn it into something attractive and productive. Yeah, that's cool to move to go mostly native. And then I recycled my solar collector and made this gate. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. And then this is a Japanese technique called Shoshugiban or yakishugi, where you burn it. Oh, no and, kidding. And um, it preserves the wood. And then you oil it with linseed oil. Stella, come. That's beautiful looking. Yeah, it actually you held know. up really well. Come on, baby. Come on. Stella, come, we got cookies. Come on, <laughs> let's go, let's go to the beach. Come on. <laughs> She's camera shy. Wow. But this actually involves uh, scorching this. If you want to get fancy, you can take a brush and you brush the soot off. Um, and then I just added, these are actually the old headers for the solar. So these were connected to the top there. And um, I thought they looked really cool as handles. So. Yeah, that's really beautiful, man. Great job yeah. on that. And then this side, all the pieces fell off. But it still looks really cool. Then I tried, yeah. to, tried to get artistic with it. The patina. I mean, yeah. really, it's unreal. Yeah, you, you can, I patinaed it. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, how did it come out that perfectly? You take um, ammonia and salt and stuff like that and kind of get it started. But, of course, out here on the beach side, it, it just goes and goes. And this is my other addiction. I'm a palmaholic. That's going to get way too big for that space. That but I, I don't know what to do with it now. Whether I'm just going to leave it there. Or... So that's... Copernicia macroglossa. That is absolutely beautiful. Cuban petticoat palm. Cuban petticoat it's, palm. It's oh, interesting. Since you're here, Looks like it's got little uh, thorns on the. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. But oh, oh and then it separates at points. Yeah, and they never develop a trunk, really. Well, I guess they do. I shouldn't say that, but they. You never trim the fronds. They just continually turn brown and then and it becomes like a petticoat. I see. Yeah. And that one's probably like 15, 20 years old. 15, yeah. Old. I was going to say the last yeah. time I was here, it seems like it was the same. Very slow stuff. growers until they get to about this point and then they take off like a lot of palms. But this one is. How tall do they get? Um, <laughs> I've seen some pretty tall ones. Really? I would say maybe 15, 20 hmm. feet. Hmm. I don't know. So I guess they do develop a trunk. I don't know. Interesting. But yeah, so this is what I do with my yard scraps as part of the food forest. I thought I would Absolutely. demonstrate this. I love that. Yes. And um, a lot of people, you know, go to the trouble of having a, a composter, but it's just too much hassle for me. And you got enough bugs here to where as long as you bury it, you, you want to you want to get it down far enough to where animals aren't getting into it. Yeah. I could probably bury it a little deeper than that. So you just direct bury. Do you find worms around your yard? Oh, or yeah. feeding on it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, with it, having the sandy soil that we have out here on the beach, you know, the yeah. sterile, sterile sand basically, you constantly have to be adding amendments, and that's the that's the people ask me what my secret is, and that's pretty much it. It's soil health. Soil health. And did you seed with, with uh, red wigglers or anything? Did you add any worms? No, but I did have them in this. So ah. this is another kind of cool thing wow. that I created. So Look at that. That's so, cool. so this is another way to dispose of um, kitchen scraps. You throw them in here, and this has holes in it all the way down. And then you get your red wigglers in, in your soil. And they'll go in there and they'll eat the eat the kitchen scraps and turn it into into soil. So it it basically creates fertilizer. Wow. Um, and then eventually you have to underneath it there's a, a cap that you take off. Okay. Because it all kind of becomes filled with soil, like really rich. Oh no kidding. Soil. Yeah. So you, you pull it. That's why it's raised off the ground like that. But I built it, at, you know. So all the worm castings or whatever are kind of like in the middle? Yeah, yeah. Wow. But the worms will, will also move in and out and aerate yeah. it. Right now, I don't think I have any worms in there. I think they all died. Mm. So yeah, yeah, you got to keep feeding them. Restock it. But it, it's really good for like a winter garden in Florida where you can put um, lettuces and small mm -hmm. little small plants in these. Like mm -hmm. right now, it's probably not... And it's optimal. Is this oregano? Yeah, this is Cuban oregano. So, cool. so mm. if you can use it in um, black bean soup, that's what um, the Cubans so, use it for primarily. It smells delicious. And you yeah, get a gigantic a pineapple. Yeah, that's probably not the that's best place for a pineapple. Grandfather. I think this is. I tried. think it's a great place for it. It looks incredible. I don't know how you grow the healthy pineapples, dude. Every pineapple I've grown looks like it's just struggling to merely survive. You know what the secret is? Is you grow them in pots. They like to be, like, choked in a pot. And, okay. Um, I need. Or to... maybe it's just because they, they the soil stays healthier. Do you use a specific water. kind of soil though, or is it just a regular old? You. The best thing to use that I found is um, pine bark. Pine bark. Grow them directly in pine bark. Maybe a little bit of like, you know, um, something to get them started, like a little bit of soil mixed in with it. And then, yeah, I mean, all these you'll see throughout the yard are just from 
Well, the majority of them are from cuttings, just the tops of uh, store-bought pineapples. Mm. Oh, you've got a pepper in there, too. No, like an actual pepper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that come back, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we had some green peppers That's and red cool. peppers that were growing in here. Of course, you know, it's kind of winter time now, so. Um, well, I'm thinking of it. What do you know about tamarind trees? Tamarind. Um, do you know anything about it? I know very little. I think they're very tropical. Yeah. Which means, you know, they're hard to keep alive. But with global warming, who knows? You know, it <laughs> right. might be going all kinds of tropical. <laughs> Look things. at the bright side. Yeah. Tamarind fruit. So um, this is a bonsai Bismarck palm. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I tried to kill it. Now, what do you mean bonsai? Is that a specific type? No. I just call it that. Oh, okay. <laughs> because if you look on this side, I I cut it with um, my saw and tried to kill it, but it came back. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, it'll probably die at some point. But the reason why I, I, I tried to kill it is because it was starting to shade my solar array yeah. up there. And um, That's epic. And I wanted to leave it just so that the birds would have something to live in, you know, kind of, kind yeah. of create a... Woodpecker for sure. A woodpecker or something, but... I mean, like every palm tree, it seems like it yeah. has a dead head or whatever. Yeah, it seems like a woodpecker's in there. It was really Quick. cool when it first came out because you can see the little tiny fronds and... Yeah. It, now it's almost like growing back to yeah. the, it's normal. You made it upset. Now it's going to come back twice as strong. Yeah. Yeah, look at these papaya. Yeah. Holy moly. The papaya aren't the best. I call them a vertical compost yeah. feeders. They look kind of cool, but after a while they just get, I think, too... Some of them, like this one, really aren't even very edible. Oh, really? The flavor of the papaya is not that yeah, good? Yeah, they're not like the big, long ones. And, yeah. I, and they grow like weeds. I didn't even plant weeds. They just, of course, with the way I compost my yard, stuff pops up that I, that I eat, which is another good reason to to just put stuff in your, you know, put the, the kitchen scraps in your yard because you right. don't have the food that you commonly eat if it decides to grow. Yeah. So yeah, you'll see a lot of um, avocados because I eat a lot of avocados. That might, is that an avocado? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is. Kind of looks like it. Oh wow. Speaking of avocados, this is... Uh, oh yeah. This one's doing pretty good this year. This is a Brogdon. Look at all those flowers. Brogdon. In avocado. the past, I've had a lot of problems with the flowers just dropping off and fruit not developing. Yeah. And it's still early to see whether that's actually going to happen. And I think it may get a fungus, and that's why that happens. Mm. Um, similar to what happens to mangoes. The, like the bottom rot thing? It might be a thracnose or something. Thracnose? Uh, or, yeah. Call it. Yeah, well, if anybody watching the video has a solution for that, leave it in the comments. But it looks like yeah. you've got a lot of flowers on this tree right now. Yeah. Do you it's, need another pollinator for this? Um, so they have A and B types, and it helps to have more avocados in your yard of, of each type. Okay. But you don't necessarily have to have both types to... Yeah. To get fruit. I think figs are like that too. Yeah. And then I started. I, I, normally, this time of year, I go out leafing, or I go out and get oak leaves by mm -hmm. the trailer load. And I oh, really and I'll fill all this in. Um, and then by this time this year, it will all be decomposed. Right. Um. So yeah, that, I'll I'll be doing that, and it looks good too because it. It kind of, I love it's kind of like oak mulch, leaves. you know, but uh, yep. it's uh, it's the best mulch. Do you check the um, the pH at all? I've never done that. No. Somebody on the channel when I, I said, you know, that the oak leaves are acidic. Well, beachside soil is so alkaline that I can't see uh, how you could really make it too acidic. Oh, uh, yeah. So I don't think we have to worry about that too much here. And we yeah. have such well-drained soil that right. um, it's... Yeah, I think you're on the right concern, which is making sure you get that organic matter return. And almost all fruit trees like a 
acidic soil or somewhat acidic soil, I think. Oh, okay. I got a couple chicken cage wire things that I made, just compost bins, temporary compost bins. Yeah. Build it with oak leaves, so. So then back here, this is uh, Barbados cherry with some flowers on it. I don't see any yeah. developing fruit. It, it also gets a lot of like mold and like a fungal thing going, but. Yeah, it seems to survive through yeah, it. Yeah, you can kind of see, um, what do they call that stuff? Like uh, rust. City mold or something like City that. City mold, I really? I don't know, I forget what it's called. But. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, time. The, the uh, Barbados cherry, it seems like there's always one of those yeah. sap sucker bugs. That's the other thing, yeah, they have the, yeah, yeah. The, the bug that, with the... With the straw. Yeah, and the straw, and he goes in there <laughs> yeah. and kind of makes the fruit ugly. And makes it ugly. I swear it makes it taste a little bit off, but yeah. it might just be my imagination. But it's still That's kicking beautiful. out fruit, so just not the right time of year for it. And, then and back I'll, there is the... Oh, nice. The, um, yeah, watch that. Mm. Um, Ever-bearing mulberry, which I keep cutting way back. A lot of my trees, you'll see where I'm, yeah. they get cut back it's pretty regularly. Fruit. You know, and it's interesting. We got compote. We got um, bunnies for manure. Oh, nice. That's what I need. So, oh, dude, yeah. yeah. I get the hookup on that. But, but um, anyway, so... So you actually they, keep the bunnies in your yard and... I do. I build a hutch. What and a little bunny them? run. Yeah. <laughs> feed them mulberry leaves. I feed them uh, all kinds of greens. I grow some microgreens, you know, carrot greens and stuff in my yard. And uh, they eat all that stuff. Kale, all of it. That's what I could use, I think. But then I, you know, also bunny, bunny pellets. There's a little, like, alpha alpha pellet you, you feed them. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So easy. And they're great. Yeah, John Rogers, who you'll hopefully meet. Yeah, I'd love to meet him, yeah. He, he had a huge, like, I don't know how many bunnies he had, but really? he was doing that. But that's a good indicator that the pro. Yeah, and he was doing biochar too, which is something. I'm super curious about that. Yeah, I had I don't have any biochar in my yard, but so I'm trying to get more avocados. There's an avocado that I planted last year that's been kind of neglected. Oh yeah, back there with the I yellow. See it back with the yellow tag. Yeah, and then this is a sapodilla in the front because the the big sapodilla I had in the back part of my yard died. So oh, Sapodilla no. is, is known for um, the latex that the that's produced. So the latex is used to make, or used to be used to make chiclet chewing gum. <laughs> but the fruit is really good. Wow. So, and it looks like the leaves are, this one I love the called, plants that have these glossy, this one called? you know, rigid leaves. They seem to do much better in the sea breeze. Morana. Morena. Morana. Yeah. Sapodilla. Sapodilla. This, this, this avocado is a day avocado. Nice. And that one's right in the shade, or did you, it wasn't in the shade yeah, until that I mulberry? Tried, I tried to plant it somewhat in the shade just because they they, they yeah. don't like to dry out. Okay. Then there's another one back here that I'm trying to get established. Yeah, your mulberry is loaded. Good thing is they are sending out new growth. This one is a uh, Donnie. Okay. More papaya. Those actually look. I was gonna say those better, look pretty good. Better than some of the other ones. And then next to it is a, a black sapote or chocolate pudding fruit. All right. Looks like you've got fruit on that. I had some, but uh, a friend of mine that. Um, well, you know, Ben, he, he came oh, by yeah? and harvested a bunch for the um, uh, the farmer's market. That's excellent. Yeah. And this yep. is a peach here. Does it still have the pattern? Florida Grande. Wow. I forget the names of them. That's why I'll leave the Yeah, it's just waking on. up. Yeah. And then this one over here has a fungal issue. So it's probably going to die, and I need, actually need to get it out of the yeah. yard. Do you know what that is? That conch I down there? I don't know what that is. So that is the AIDS of palms, and you can tell it's killing it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's this type it, of fungus. Yeah, it's, the only way to get rid of it is dig it out. 
and I've tried burning it and cutting it off and it just keeps coming back but I need to get out of the yard because it will spread no kidding and it's wild looking yeah so if you ever see them on a palm tree it's gonna die <laughs> oh really and I didn't know they infected other plants but and a lot of times they're transmitted oh, by weed whackers believe it or not because people will come they'll weed whack around their palm or tree yeah I believe it and they move it from plant to plant because it injured you know a weed whacker kind of injures the right trunk. yep so um and then the other thing i do you can still see some remnants of it i throw down pine needles too mostly in walking paths it's kind of all composted away now but it, sure. it, it's a good it makes for a really good ground um, compost i remember you were telling me that you like to use the horse manure yeah, I haven't done that in a long time, and I, I've been able to get away with just um, oak leaves. <laughs> but I, I would, I'm sure a lot of these plants would benefit yeah. greatly from some some hits of nitrogen with uh, either horse manure or, right. or bunny manure. Yeah, yeah. The cool thing about the bunny manure is you just put it direct on. Yeah, it's not hot. It's clean. Oh, nice. If you can direct apply and it's it, it's easy to toss around. So you just <laughs> take the container, yeah. and it's like you feel like. Uh, I don't know. Good luck fairy for every tree you put it under. Yeah, and this is another fruit tree. It's like my wolf. Oh, wow. My landscape assistant chopped it back a little bit too much. It's a berry. Beauty. I'm trying to remember what it's called, but I need I need to cut this other um hibiscus. What do they call this thing? It's no. called copper leaf. Copper leaf. Get rid of the copper leaf, so yeah, it looks like there's some more flowers forming. Maybe it'll get fruit it's just a bush though that's cool and behind it is um suriname cherry which is an invasive but i still like to eat them so they're i love them and, and most of them are red but there are black and purple varieties too purple yeah wow i didn't know about that yeah so i yeah, I, I think there's a male and female version man because i had one that just flowered every year and, and never, never produced fruit that one doesn't really produce a whole lot either for some reason. I and then I have a, another one that grew from a seed, yeah, that is bountiful. Really? Stacked. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So I, this is uh, Carambola, obviously. Oh, look at that. It's got a little bit of This fruit. is a big one. Yeah, it's finally taken off. They, um, and this is the carry, which is a sweet okay. variety. That's all I have in my yard is carry. Another pineapple. Did Is it at the end of its fruiting? Now this is a... Uh, beginning of March it's, it's wild to see them on there that, yeah, like mine doesn't produce fruit kind of weird that it just has a couple fruit on it but the carry carambola yeah is a, a sweeter variety yeah it's a good one to get so that is an epic croton and the Alphonse yeah, mango which really hasn't been uh, that heavy of a producer but really every year is different how do you like the fruit on that one you know, they say um, the Indians love it. They say it's the mm. best, best mango in India. But that's a the do, that is a pretty tall claim. Yeah, I I don't find it to be that awesome. <laughs> yeah, but you never know. I mean, sometimes you can just have a tree that doesn't produce the best fruit. Maybe the climate's not right. Well, I have a Tommy Atkins that I feel like is just kind of real average. Yeah, I Mango. never like Tommy Atkins that much either. Yeah, and then uh, but uh, Hayden. Oh, you like the Hayden? I love the Hayden, but they're bottom rotters. Uh, every time they bottom rot every year, so uh, well, you got to kind of pick the point of when you think they're just going to fall off. Yeah, <laughs> eat them before they give way. Yeah. So Did this Croton right here. Yeah. Is a pretty unique one. Now I've heard of the story of the alleyways in Miami, where you could have two hundred varieties of Croton in one alleyway. Yeah. The biodiversity of crotons is not high at lows. Yeah, that one. You don't find this, this there. It's called oak leaf, or um, what is that one mm -hmm. called? Yeah, it's like a yeah, the gold dust oak leaf looking yeah. thing, but it's got this going on. That is really. Yeah, it's neat. They're they're neat plants. Gotta be kidding. They that they get a lot of bug infestation. Really? Um, I had no idea. So, uh, I got tired of, you might even be able to see some, yep. There you go. Uh, okay. You can see the uh, ants farming the um, scale, or or is, this, is that what they call it, scale? 
I don't know. But yeah, so I, I just if it lives, it lives, and if not, I'll plant something else. Yeah. But it just got to be too much work to try to keep this off. Look at all these little volunteer trees. Yeah. So this is Canistel. Ah. Which is a very unique orange fruit, also called egg fruit. Really? Because it looks, I guess, kind of like an egg yolk. A oh, there's one. Egg yolk. Are there any fruit on it? There is. Oh yeah, there's one right there. Okay. And yeah, it's obviously been sending out volunteers along with, um, it looks like the black yeah. sapotes got a bunch of oh wow babies popping up. And you can grow those from seed pretty successfully. Really? Yeah, yeah most, all, most all of these are from seed. We're How about the canistel? Will they grow from seed, do you know? I think so. I don't know, you know, if they fruit real well or how long yeah. it takes, but um, but I guess it's a pretty aggressive. I mean, a pretty strong grower got that yeah. tall. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. taking some sea breeze hit up at the top. Yeah, you can tell it's been getting blasted with some wind or something. And then uh, another Look. avocado. This one is purple, or what is this one called? I can't even remember. It hasn't been a heavy producer because it's kind of struggled. I think it had some sun damage on the bark, you can kind of tell. Yeah. But, we'll see. Avocados are a little tough to get established out here. That's cool, it's using the uh, plumeria as the trellis. Yeah. <laughs> I keep whacking the plumeria back. So that <laughs> and, um, and this is one of my favorite mangoes of all, is the uh, Kent. Ah. You can see it's getting some some athrachnus damage really yeah looks like it powdery mildew or i don't know one of the two right but still it will it produce still is fruit. a pretty heavy producer though it, it, it'll hopefully have some good amount of fruit on it hmm. and i don't spray them with copper this is a completely organic yard so good deal yeah, if you get those bunnies, you're going to want everything to be organic. <laughs> yeah. Behind you are some bananas. Oh, yeah. What kind of variety is that? I think it's just like almost like the common variety you get in the grocery store. There might uh -huh. be a couple different varieties in there. Not super productive. Don't know why. <laughs> Maybe not enough fertilizer. I heard that you have to really fertilize them a lot. No kidding. When they're small and kind of push them into... Into establishing the big state, rhizome, yeah. like thing. Um, yeah, man. I grew musa bananas in my yard, and I'm not kidding; they are 30 feet tall. Wow, it's nuts. Yeah, I find I've got to move the whole thing now because it's up in the. Yeah, those will get a lot bigger. I thought it was going to be under the power line, thinking, but. Yeah. Nope. Somebody told me you dig a hole, like two or three feet deep, and then mm -hmm. you plant your bananas in the bottom of the hole, or and then you throw stuff in the hole as compost. Yeah. And then that way they stay short and they don't fall over. Easier to pick. That's and, killer. Uh, yeah, that's always a good practice is just to try to keep your fruit trees. This is a great spot for that giant lily. Holy man. Yeah. Trenum lily. It's so cool. Yeah. It looks kind of cool there. Yeah, it doesn't get the native plant award, but yet. <laughs> yeah. And then oh. This is a bottle palm that was root bound in the pot. So it kind of developed a funky looking trunk. Yeah. Oh, wow, that is now so cool. Now it looks cool. like it's kind of struggling. <laughs> They're kind of cool. They're, when they get older, for some reason, they don't seem that attractive anymore. Yeah, well, the, I always notice the leaves on these seem to get a little, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's suffering from a lot of deficiencies. Um, right. That's the other drawback to having a sandy soil yard because mm. I don't put palm new fertilizers I probably should but yeah my main focus is on having food right food, I'm gonna get this food uh, and animals like here here's another native this is beach sunflower it makes it great that? Mm. it smells like I don't, know. I don't know if you can eat it or not but they smell kind of nice. Yeah. 
They smell almost like a real sunflower. Yeah, then you can, you know, grow things like pineapple. Yeah, and even outside of the pot, you got to win on the pineapple. Yeah, and the nice thing is that ground covers like that, that look pretty, they are great for replacing lawn, your lawn, and um, and they, they shade the ground, yeah. choke out weeds. Yeah, and I think you could get one and it would take up a huge area, right? I mean, like, oh, yeah. like the roots wouldn't impact a lot of stuff yeah, going around. If I, so I, I have another gardener that's part of <laughs> my wife who, uh, <laughs> yeah. who likes things a little bit more manicured. Right. So I would have more jungle. You can tell that I haven't been here in a while because a lot of it's just <laughs> wiped out. But it'll come back. No, it looks good. It's another black sapote. That oh, no kidding. Just for some reason, just never really... Yeah. Dude, I had the same thing happen to my Did leaves. Anything. That's just some of them, not all of them. That that whatever that is, the bug that does that to the chews yeah, up. Yeah, what is? I forget the name of that bug, but mm. they they mostly do cosmetic damage. They yeah, really it grew right much, through it. Yeah, and this is um, Malabar chestnut, which oh, I've wow. only had one fruit off of, <laughs> and that was just—it's <laughs> the weirdest thing. It looks like a chefalera. It does look like a chefalera. Except for the buttress. Roots. Except for the fact it's a giant tree. Yeah, and I, I hack it way back because I'm kind of afraid that with a root system like that that it could start doing some damage. Yeah, it's got some legs. Probably start wrecking that wall back there soon. Yeah. But it's been there a long time, so might be all right. This is the pregnant palm. <laughs> it's weird. The back side of it's almost flat, and it. It looked like it sustained some type of damage from yeah. If you look at it, it's cracked and don't really know what caused that. But, um, Interesting. Yeah. Gee. But foxtail palms have become very popular as replacement for queen palms in Florida. How old do you think that thing is? This one? Yeah. This is a big one. Probably 15. 15, wow. Yeah. You ever get a foxtail palm growing from a seed? Oh my god, yeah. These really? Are all foxtail palms. Oh, these are all foxtail palms. Yeah. I, I've never tried to grow one. That's cool. Yeah, they, they're hard to transplant because mm. they have very deep root systems. Oh, the old tap root to China. There you go. Look at that. So you could take that and plant it, and um, you might make survive. it. Nice. But I'm, I got tired of digging them up and giving them away. But when people come, it's yeah, I'll pull out a few if you. You want to get rid of some? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, take as many as you want. Sweet. Another carry, carambola. Another uh, carry. Yeah, and another black sapote with more um, leaf damage. So the bug that does this, we might be able to find one. They're white. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that a weevil? Mm, I can't remember the name of it. And they do attack other trees too. You can shake them sometimes and they'll fall off. You can see them a lot better at night. I don't see any on there now, but it around. I love the use of crotons everywhere, man. Yeah. Some really cool varieties. These two and, and this, are this is pretty common, but this one over here is really interesting. Yeah. You got some interesting varieties. Yeah, I, I had, I probably had a whole bunch more. Mm. Um, but these are what. Oh, uh, what do we yes, have I here? I don't know what you call this. What? Um, <laughs> but it's some type of. What do they call that? A burl? I don't know. Um, I mean, I've seen them on trees yeah. before, but never like this. Yeah, on a fruit tree, it's kind of like weird. Like on a fruit tree and all over, like in one place maybe? It's almost but. like a cancer or something. Yeah, it's like a tumor, it looks like. It's the weirdest thing, but it's kind it of does cool. produce fruit. That that one I grew from seed, too. So it's, it's pretty old. Oh, look, there's some fruit on it up there. Oh, wow. There's a sapodilla. <laughs> the lonely sapodilla. Yeah, it's not a heavy producer, but... It's cool. And then this is the Valencia Pride. Come back here mm. for a better, a better view of it. And it is loaded with wow. flowers this year and some developing fruit up top there. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, so, fruit's already set. It's a good mango. Very popular. Valencia. It's not my favorite, but it's a. I like it. I mean, it's it's very lemony and citrusy taste. Really? And, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. big, so a lot of people like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Coconut. Always a great addition. Oh yeah. Beach side. I've yeah. been on the search for the Malay. Yeah. I used to have one. Is I that, got it. I think that's what this is. Really? Yeah. Because they're Ooh. they're smaller, right? Smaller, yeah. Yeah, this is a Malay. Is sure. it really? Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, if you that's an old coconut. It's survived. If that's I an old coconut, then that's three, definitely though. a Malay because. Yeah, because it would be like. It would be skyrocket. Ten times taller. Yeah, I had three of them, and they. This is the only one that survived. There was some that were like an orangey color. Yeah. Or yellow, maybe. Yellow Malay, yeah. And then this is the green. This is the green. How cool is that? Yeah. And there's, a, there's one laying on the ground. We'll go look at it. Oh, sweet. Or we can look at it now. So that's where sure. I'm going to pop a bit Malay. But... Yeah. So I have a coconut huster. <laughs> Her name is Stella. <laughs> and she's very good at husking coconuts, and this is what you end up with. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, we can open that up inside and try it if you want. Nice. But sure. It, it should be good to eat. Excellent. So, yeah, and then you can take this great stuff. Coconut, how do you say it? C O I R? Core? Coco Core. Core or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, they use it in. Um, I don't know, hanging plants a lot, ferns and stuff like that. I was just watching a video where, yeah, this guy was saying he uses it for all of his soil. He buys a small block of it and then it expands out to this huge quantity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very yeah, light. Yeah, it's too. great stuff. I would, but, you know. Also, perlite or perlite is another thing I'm curious about incorporating in. It's kind of an artificial thing, but yeah, I think in Florida, probably not a bad thing. But, yeah, I love having coconuts. Dude, that Eat thing is... A lot. So this is a uh, Glen Mango. Ah, uh, yeah. Hasn't been a heavy producer. Maybe this year. I don't know though. though. Look at this. It's starting to look pretty good. It's probably it, it does lose a lot of fruit over the course of. It drops a lot more for some reason than right. some of my other um, mangoes. Oh, lychee. Yeah, lychee kind of taking a beating from the wind. Last time I was here, this lychee was not as sprouted. It's got tons of new growth on it. Yeah. I wish it would be a real heavy producer because I love lychee. And then behind it is a key lime, which it has pretty regular fruit on it. Limes are always nice to have in the yard. Yeah, it doesn't mind being partially shaded. And this is another can of Stell. Everything out here seems to take. Every time I see this, I think it's a loquat. Yeah. Then I just planted another. Uh, actually, this one came back from seed. So the sapodilla I had here before was uh -huh. a big one, and it was a pretty heavy producer. Um, but it died. But this is one of its babies that sprouted up. So. See what it can do. Are those sweet potatoes? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, sweet potato vine. We've gotten some sweet potatoes off of it. Oh, you've got the uh, moringa. Yeah. Got moringa. Um, this is a Tebow mango, which has kind of been struggling a little bit. Yeah. Probably doesn't get enough nutrients. Yeah. And then that is the, what do they call that one? Like the, um, uh, it's like the incredible mango or something. Oh wow! Like that. It's supposed to bloom multiple times a year. Nice, but I haven't gotten any fruit off of it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And this is just a windbreak, mostly. Hmm. Another croton over there hiding underneath it. Moringa. Do you eat moringa a lot? I haven't, I've, but I've got like five of them growing in pots right now. Yeah, this is a seed, I yeah. think, isn't it? 
Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Mine I'd love to grab seeds. one of those seeds too. Yeah, you can definitely have that. Sweet, look at that. Beauty. Yeah, but just this, uh, is, this is a rare cabbage palm from Miami. Oh, no kidding. It's called Sable Miamiensis. <laughs> and, wow. Um, it looks a lot like these, but it does have some unique characteristics that it's starting to show, like this this um, hair, I guess you call it. But yeah. And the leaf look, looks a little different. I can't wait till it gets bigger. Right. Yeah. It, it does look different, though. Yeah. That's so really cool. What else cool. we have back here of interest? I love the way you, you did the palm trees here oh, on the yeah. patio. That's yeah. super cool, That's man. That's another John Rogers idea. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I lost a lot of them. Oh, I know what the name of that conch is that's killing the... Oh, yeah. It also killed this. It's called Ganoderma. 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 If it ever gets in your yard... Looks like is there, there might be some on this one. Is there some conchs over there? Yeah, it, it kind of killed that too. I don't see any. This one definitely had it for a long time. And I tried everything to get rid of it, burning it. And yeah. I even resorted to putting bleach on it. And <laughs> nothing kills it. It just keeps coming back. Yep. You got to dig up. You got to dig up the plant and the soil surrounding it. Oh man. Um, too much out back here, other than palms. This is another Barbados or Suriname cherry. This is the purple or black one. I can't remember. Is this a fruit producer for you? Mm, occasionally, I think yeah. it doesn't get enough sun back here. But it's pretty cool. This is a uh, old woman palm. Oh wow, look Similar at that. Similar to old man palm. Wow, that is a really cool Coco Thrinax something. Coco Thrinax. Yeah. Coco Thrinax are great palms. I've uh, never seen a frond like that. It looks Yeah. That is really cool. Have you gotten seeds off that one yet? The Coco Thranex? The co no. 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 But this is another Coco Thranex over here. This one is seeded. Mm. I think this is Coco Thranex Miraguama. Oh, okay. And it's got a really cool oh. looking bark. It's with, like burlap. Yeah, it's almost like burlap. Isn't that cool? It's a very attractive trunk. And then they, they hybridized. And these are one of my favorite palms right here. What Pseudo is this? Phoenix. Um, what's the last part of it? I can't remember. It's, it's common name is spindle palm. Spindle palm. In the same family as bottle palm. Yeah, it looks similar, but these get really big, I think, right? They, they get... the, I think they're full grown. Oh, no kidding. Much, yeah. You can tell where, like on that one, especially where it got uh, some damage from, I think, a hurricane or a freeze. The bark. See how the trunk really shrunk? Oh, yeah. But they're great palms. They, the only thing they don't like is cold. Oh, yeah. They can handle hurricanes. They can handle, and, and, the, and this stuff, the, the flowers and fruit are like pom-poms. And they have an incredible sweet smell. That's cool. Can you eat them? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. I learned this year that areca palms are edible. Yeah. I had no idea. Ben told me that. Yeah, arecas are edible. And you ever eaten them though? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I have a little citrus area over here. Making sure he wasn't joking me. No, I'm pretty sure you can eat them. So this is um, lime. Beautiful. You can actually take some home with you if you I'd want. I'd love to. Yeah, that one is beyond right. Nice. It's like a lemon. I gotta get some limes in my life. This year, I added the grapefruit to my Did yard. You? Yeah, you can tell it's got some deficiency. I probably should have added a lime. Yeah, you, you, you have to have lime. 
who doesn't like Corona with lime, you know? Exactly. And then that's a lemon, which I'm nursing along. And then there's some pineapples developing. Gigantic. Uh, last year I had so many pineapples. I'm hoping this year is going to be a, a bountiful year. Looks like we have one here. That's what they start out like. Mm. They're real pretty too. And then they kind of get like that. How long do you think it'll take for them so, to set there? So the common ones that you get in the supermarket don't have thorns on them. This one is not the common one. Okay, yeah. But it is edible. It's just really small. And that one, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have a bunch of pineapples. You're going to have a bumper crop this year. Yeah. And how long until these little pineapples come uh, into the full ground? Quite a long time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Like a year or something? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Maybe not quite a year. Patience. And then this is my favorite mango of all time, and that is the rosy gold. Oh, wow. It's a small dooryard mango, they call them, or a, a dwarf mango, and it just cranks out fruit. No quality. kidding. Good quality fruit? Very good quality. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was thinking of adding one, especially the fact that it's a smaller sized one. I haven't been able to find it. I keep looking for rosy gold, but if you can find rosy it, gold. Rosy gold. Okay. You know, I was thinking of taking a drive down to Homestead. Yeah. They have those nurseries. I've been asking Ben to give me one. But yeah, Ben, right. Yeah, he could probably he hasn't get it from South Park. Maybe Zill or yeah, his connections. Down there yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Is this the miracle fruit right here? No, this is. Um, what is that? Let me see if I can say it right. Okay. Javo Chicaba. Oh, yeah, yeah. And no kidding. surprisingly, it doesn't have fruit now, but the fruit will develop along the. the Flowers? This is the Jabo Tikaba. No. I guess it's had fruit, which amazed me because normally they have to get bigger. Yeah, every picture I've seen of them, they're just giant. Yeah, this like one, the trunk is, is this thick. This one is not the black variety. This oh. is the, um, I think the red variety. Of them. Wow. And this is another Jabo Tikaba. Nice. And um, you can tell it just flushed out some new growth because of all the. Um, the rain we got but yeah. so your rain barrel system is rocking yeah that's a missing link from my permaculture system yeah <laughs> i don't have the rain barrel yet they're they're kind of a, a hard thing to keep working right mm, and yeah keep mosquitoes out of oh so no kidding the mosquitoes huh? i mean you have to make sure that any any of the entrances have screens on them and then i even throw mosquito dunks in there occasionally but interesting Okay, yeah, I didn't realize it was, I thought just because the nature of them being closed, it would be a little easier, but. Yeah, this is Rumi Chama. Kind of a new addition. Haven't really got many Rumi Chamas off of it, but uh, it's but, a, it looks like a black, a black fruit. Blackberry, little, yeah. And then this is, my attempt Ooh. at a uh, vegetable garden. I got a couple of tomatoes. Nice. These look pretty healthy. Yeah. And um, collards. What else do I have back there? Not much more than that. I don't know what these are. Huh. I have to ask Gloria about that. They look like cucumbers. Maybe they are cucumbers. Yeah, they are cucumbers. How do I know? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just sensing it. I, feel, yeah, I hope we get cucumbers because I haven't been successful with those. Mm. And this is a really cool palm too. This one's called seashore palm. Kind of looks like pop art for your yard. Wow, that's, that's a as, really unusual that's as big color. As they get. They're from Brazil. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, they got that foxtail kind of yeah. palm structure. Really cool looking fronds on them. But really, yeah. but they never get bigger than that. That's a very interesting color of the palm. I mean, it's like a halfway between the grayish and the greenish yeah. varieties. And I they're guess. pretty hardy and they ne they look great all the time. So you can fit them anywhere. Yeah, this ooh, look at that. It's got a seed pod on it. Mm. Yeah. It's a weird seed pod. Holy mm. mouth. Lemongrass. I never really use this for anything, but... Well, I'm gonna learn to cook with more stuff in my yard. Yeah, I make soups. Well, I planted lemongrass this year because the rabbits eat it. Oh but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> That's yeah, a cool I, thing. I need to come over and. Uh... Yeah, man. Does that look like a face? 
<laughs> it does. It's look like a face of someone you know. It's got some eyebrows and everything, man. It's awesome. <laughs> I always thought those things were cool. <laughs> you can actually use it on green coconuts to get into them before... without even husking them. You know what's weird is sometimes these things, when you get into them, they'll like shoot out. You, you hear the pressure? Wow. I, I've done it and it just went like, <laughs> like shot in my face before. <laughs> not to get the... So when they get to this point, I'm not sure if it's going to be sweet water. But um, definitely is going to have some coconut meat in it. Ben's more of an expert at this than I am, but... I guess that's good enough. It's got a hole in it. Well, he showed me the uh, sugar cane peeler. Oh, really? <laughs> Do you know, yeah, you can never unknow that. Because then every time you try to peel sugar cane, you know it could be better. That thing was pretty cool. Was it's like peeling uh, carrot. Oh, really? Just a gigantic one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would like to do, do the pigeon peas that he has, but the, have you ever seen well, it? When you come over, I'll give you a pot. I've got three of them grown. Oh, really? Yeah, that I haven't planted yet. So. He's given me some, too, and I, I, yeah. I don't know if I just couldn't get them started. Yeah. But they're, they're cool, pretty cool plants. They're soil amenders and mm, Yeah, that's what he's saying, the chop fixers. and drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't even been over to his nursery, but I hear it's pretty amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Really is. He's got, uh, yeah, well, depending on the time of the year, but yeah, so many things I, had to, I wasn't even thinking about. Like that Roselli, that uh, sorrel, Jamaican sorrel, the Florida cranberry stuff. It's so cool. Yeah, he gave me some of that. What does that taste like? It tastes yeah. like cranberries. I mean, exactly. Really? Yeah, but you know, if you eat a regular raw cranberry, it doesn't taste that good. But I mean, this actually tastes like a cranberry right out of the gate. Yeah, it's a hibiscus. All right. Okay, what does this remind you of? <laughs> Corona beer commercial. <laughs> Put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some remedy, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's an amazing amount of water in these things. When I had the uh, yellow Malaysian, Malay coconut in the front yard, I'd get it. There were a, a couple of different guys that would come by. Oh, really? That would, yeah. There harvest. were Puerto Rican guys that were always like, hey, you mind if I take I mean, so what great rum years? drinks? They died or? They got the white, fly, some kind of white stuff on it. Like yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know what it's called, but it's like yeah, a little white, white fly. fly. Mm -hmm. Got all over it and it... Uh, put a sap rain all over my wife's car. <laughs> like, and I tried uh, a bunch of things, you know, it was just like raining down, whatever, bleeding sap in the wind. Yeah, Cause it was like honey, what do they call it? Like honeydew or something. It's like a, it's like oh, a- Oh, really? Yeah, I forget what that stuff is. Well, it came down all over, yeah, so it was a nightmare. So you got rid of them, huh? I got rid of it. It was such a beautiful tree, though, that actually, as I was sawing it down, my neighbor came over and asked me not to saw it down. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was one of those. <laughs> Yeah, thing is about it's a prolific producer of fruit. If I had planted it somewhere else, I probably could have tolerated the. Yeah, let's we'll see if this is rain. drinkable or not. Hey, done. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Bad. And it was at this point that I realized time to turn off the camera and enjoy life. By the way, that coconut milk from the green Malay coconut was so sweet. Combined with that lime juice, I gave it a perfect 10. And I appreciate Dave allowing his puppy to peel the coconut for us. Shouldn't we all teach our dogs how to peel our coconuts? Seemed like his really enjoyed the process. No dog drool flavor noticed in the coconut. This was a great afternoon spent with a very interesting person who even introduced me to things like Shishugabon. Who would have thought? I'm ready to burn some doors and wood now. <laughs> 
So hey, if you're not subscribed already to Eat Your Backyard, please subscribe. Please tell all your friends. Forward it out on the Facebook. And let's see what happens. It's more fun when we all get on the live chats and premieres like this one. Hey, I appreciate you. Love you so much. I could eat you. Go ahead out there and enjoy the world. There's a lot of it to see. Continue to explore and expand your horizons like we just did on EV Explorer. Thanks for watching. Eat your backyard.